Oh, oh, she's going. Oh, 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 oh. So I'm coming up today because it's been a full week that I haven't been at the garden. I've been away on happy holidays again. We've been to Kefalonia, oh, Greek island, man. But I've deliberately not told anybody at the gardens because I, I didn't tell Bill anyways because Bill would have come in and watered everything and I didn't want that to happen because as you know I'm kind of knocking the, the polytunnel down and I just wanted to see what the conditions would be like especially in the polytunnel without watering for a solid week. Come and have a look. And you can see there, let's have a look at you, show you. There's all the baskets ready for the, the produce. Because there's so much at the moment. Right. These need to be full when I get home. Just before, just before we get into it and everything like that, last time I went to Sorrento and I brought back some garlic for a competition, I've done the same. We have now got, can you see that? Some Kefalonian garlic. Now it was picked from, and I'll find out what the name because I've forgotten it already, the very top village of Kefalonia. And if you know anything about Kefalonia, in 1953, there was an earthquake that destroyed everything apart from this one village. So this is the, and I kind of went up there, well, I was on the tour, but I wanted to get some of this garlic. So at the end of the show, I will tell you how to win this garlic. Look at that, man. I don't know if it's focused or not. Let's just. Of course it is, look at that. So, anywhere in the world, I'll post it out anywhere in the world, so don't worry about that. It's only like I'm only gonna send out one of them, do you know what I mean? So it's not that kind of, but end of the show. Right, let's crack on. So I don't know if you can see or not, and I'm in the right, in the right sunshine here, but the outside ones, I've, I've actually done a, a, a um, chuffed a bit for them. There's a couple of them where they've actually went, I'm pull that off just rotten with being out so long. You know, they were probably right when I should have picked them before I left. But they're all kind of coming there. So I'm gonna strip all these down, the ones that are actually done there now and ready. So they're definitely looking very nice and very, very good for the tomato sauce pots and the moussaka that I learned to make over there as well. I'll just quickly show you this bed this was the last bed that i got some top compost on you know for the no dig and it's lovely when you come back and it's still not a, <laughs> not a weed there man that's what you want never mind digging away digging away get that stuff on and it just it gives you time to kind of assess what you need to do as well where you come back all you're kind of thinking if you're doing like diggy 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 you're thinking right them weeds need to be done them weeds and you can't appreciate what else is going on in the garden so these are my crimson crush that i did you know i built this frame and they're all now starting to go i mean the season is kind of in my eyes finished i'll still leave them up to try and you know run into october with these ones especially to see if i can get some and look just, there's a volunteer carrot here let's see if i can oh, oh look at that man just there left and it's come oh, that's tonight because Chunky's had a little bit too much, much moussaka and chips. I always like to have chips. Chips with it, you know what I mean? Safety net, safety net. Don't like to come away hungry. But back on the veg, and there's a load of veg to pick. Come on, I'll show you. Oh. So the intention is to come, I'm gonna pick a whole load of beetroot there. But I wanna just show you a little quick thing, another little plug for no dig. This is like a bed and I've just kind of layered it with, with the compost. But there is a nice weed there. Let's have a look. And See, that was so easy. They just come out. I don't like weeds in, and you, you do get weeds, and you've got to kind of pull them out, you know, when you get them. But there's another one. Let's just, they just come out. So, anyways, beetroot. And yes, I'm going to cut them. I'm not, people say, oh, just twist them. So, I'm going to have a. We've still got some actually beetroot in there because we were away, we haven't used it, but I'm going to just do another boil up and then just, you know, have it, have it there ready. One part water, one part apple cider vinegar, T3 
teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of, I use actually now at the moment, brown sugar, because that's all I've got. There you go, I'll give you that one. <laughs> oh, Tony, they'll, they'll bleed, they'll bleed. They'll be in the pan within two hours, I think, so what the... Right, I'm gonna fast this on now. See you in a second or two. Mind, I tell you what I've noticed, and, and again, just if it's any of a tip, you pick some of them and you think like the little hard, little gnarled things, but just get them boiled up there, the skins peel off and they're still as tender as anything. Don't try and just go for nice, yeah, this is a nice one, mind you, but don't just try and go for, just get them all in, because they're all just, they're all going the same, you know, you keep them for a week or so in the brine and it's, there's a nice, like, that's a good example. It's a bit gnarly in that. But, I just boil it up still in the compost. And what I'll do with this bed is, I'll just a few, that much of compost. I might take a bit out. No, I don't, I don't think I will. I'll just about four inches of compost. And then that's this one done for the winter. I'm gonna try and pick every one. Look at that, nice one there. Anybody tried frying these? I did, and they're certainly nice, mind you. So there's one bed empty for the window. Like I say, I might not do it today, but that's all kind of empty there now. I'm gonna pick some more beetroot over there in this bed. Come with me. So I'm picking these as well, again, to clear out this bed, but I've also got like another bed of beetroot. So hopefully this, you know, it'll take us right into the kind of late part of the, the year. So a dingy little thing, I'll not bother with them. Actually, they're all dingy little, they're just little, oh, there's one. There's a few there, pick them ones. Mind you, when you get one, you don't know what I was saying, just leave the gnarly ones in. When you get ones that have kind of been nibbled by slugs and snails and puppy dogs' tails, they are a bit of a pain, so I don't bother with them ones. There we go then, there's me basket of beetroot. Like I say, I'll boil all that down straight away within the next hour or so, do you know what I mean? Depending on what kind of, what jobs are we waiting for us. And they'll be bottled and re pickled and ready. And I never bother, like I say, doesn't bleed, I'm not bothered about that. I just kind of get the leaves off, get them done, get them, you know, in brine as quick as possible. So this is me other bed of beetroot and it's not looking pretty, they're all kind of falling over, but you know, in there, I have, still have some, let's pull this one. So got some some nice ones, you know, so hopefully that'll keep us going for a while. Now these ones are me grafted outside tomatoes. And if I'm honest, I thought these might have been a bit more on the red side. This bunch is certainly going. That one, there's one or two. And I mean, I've, we're, we're going in the polytunnel, you see, you know, what happens when you don't water in a polytunnel. But um, the intention is now to kind of just leave, leave the outside ones as long as possible because it's a later season. You know, it does take a lot longer. This is what I've been told. So what we are now, middle of September. So the intention is to just leave them as long as possible and to use these ones as your, kind of, your daily driver. You know, your kind of, the tomatoes you use for your salads with everything in the polytunnel, I'm freezing straight away. But let's show you in the polytunnel. <laughs> So like I mentioned, this is the first time I've been in here and had a look around. I left it deliberately. I didn't ask Bill to come and water. Basically, I wanted to try and make the plants really almost kind of, you know, stress them out and kind of produce the fruit to kind of get the seeds out just so it's done in here. Because eventually, as you know, hopefully in the next month or so, I'm going to put up a new polytunnel. But just look at that. You know, when you talk about apples and windfall, have a look at these. 
Yes, those are the grafted gardener's delight on there. And there's absolutely loads, man. Man. But every, every plant has got an abundance of crops. I mean, just look at this, you know, the whole lot. And what I like to say, what I'm going to do is just pick them straight away and get them all into, a, you know, into the freezer bags and get them done. These are all the grafted ones. Let's just take you up and we'll get you to, the, to mine that I grew from seed. That's totally achieved what I wanted to do. You know, like, I mean, they're bone dry. They're actually bone dry there, but the, the whole fruit, the whole, I can't, I don't even think I can see a, a green one on them few plants. So they will be picked. I could take them to a farmer's market, man, and sell them as, you know, when you see them on the vine there, let's just have a little, have I got me? I haven't got me. But just, oh, come on. No, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just make a mess of it. I'm not gonna do that. You know, even the indigo blues there, look at them, man. You know, lovely. They're actually really, I'm quite pleased them as a work of art. They don't taste that good, but they still look nice. So my intention is to fill up my box with as many as I can. Maybe I might leave some of them Bellarico just to ripen off a little bit more because I'll use them for daily consumption as well. But all the gardener's delight, hopefully in the Shirley's, I'll just get away today. And this is the nice thing, mind you. That's lovely when you can just pick a vine and not individual ones. So I think leaving them like that, letting them stress themselves out has just produced a fantastic crop. Well, there's a little green one there, but I'll I'll put up with that. Another I mean, that's took every tomato off there. That that was a <laughs> money's worth plant. Everything has come off and it's finished. Tell me how to call. Show me how to forget that we did something that we can bury. Doesn't matter if we close our eyes. We did something that I can't. Oh, oh, she's gone. Oh, 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 You know, I want to try and salvage these ones that are wind falling because they're still, you just got to think, your sauce, you know what I mean? That's all I'm thinking of. There's like a nice red sauce. So they're still, just fry them in the pan. Oh, hey, there's so many. Nice red, I don't think you can see that. Nice red pepper there as well to the pot. Cause right now I'm breaking since we did some. I'm gonna pick some of these outdoor crimson crush as well. And these are just gonna be in the fridge or in on the table, should I say, just as to cut them up and use them when we can. We did some So I'm gonna pick some of these ones as well. Like I say, I'm gonna keep the, them out and just let, see how the weather, you know, changes them because they're not all ripe yet. Look at that, oh, look at that man. Oh. So, I think we can see the outside Crimson Crush has been a total success in, I mean, like I said, this is the northeast of England, man. This is, look at this, this is like, it's almost Mediterranean. 
weather here we're having and that's a, a fantastic crop so next year definitely the crimson crush outside definitely against this wall as well and there's still oodles there and i'm just going to let them go on there right there's one more john i'm going to get some more carrots as well that's a what i need a <laughs> get back on the right foot and <laughs> so put my second tears down where have i put them well i'll pull them anyways and then we can see these were those Nantes, maybe Nantes 5, is it? It's hard to get in. I've never thinned them. There's a funny shaped one. I think it's just a case of heaving them up. Oh, and just pulling them like that mind you get no marks on them at all you know it's like nice compost there's no stones there's nothing it's just i've had this netting on no trouble with the carrot fly so nice crop yeah quick wash top and tail olive oil salt and pepper in the oven 25 minutes 200 degrees wash or or i'll tell you this one carrot mash Boil them up with some garlic in some water, drain them, tiny bit, tiny bit, a tiny bit of fresh ginger or squeezy ginger. Little knob of butter, olive oil, mash them up, salt and pepper. Oh, oh I'm getting hungry, man. Hungry. But we stand up again. Another wrong turn. One more time. When you pick carrots as well, here's a tip. Clean them straight away because if you leave them for a couple of hours, you kind of get them that nice, you know, like orangey colour. And if you can see, can you see there? There we go. It's just a screen. Got soaking wet hands. Nice batch of carrots. Oh, yes. For the thin lad. <laughs> right, I need some onions as well. We've got nothing in that. Oh, the house is bare. There's my onions. Now, these are two. Oh, let's just get down and we can see it's not. But these are two sets. These were me turbo ones that I grew over in that little box there. Then I picked some of the sturgeon ones, the bigger ones. And to be honest, I like the littler size, even littler, just so it's easy to handle. You know what I mean? This is like a full, got to be making a full meal for everybody. But I've got a whole load in there, so hopefully. And I've picked all my green peppers because a lot of them, and I'm not sure what was going on there. A lot of them was going green and rotten on the vine. So they weren't like turning red. There was a couple that nearly going, you know, but most of them are kind of going. These were Toro Rosso peppers. So still pop them in salads. They'll be fine as well. Look at that. What a bloody hole there, man. That's <laughs> just leaving your garden for a week and just going away and not worrying about it. That's what you come back to. Look at that, man. So, garlic, lots of it here to give away. And like I say, we went to Kefalonia and I bought, and everyone's like, even like shopkeepers looking, why am I buying all this garlic? So I'm giving like a bulb away to everyone who, well, there'll be, how many have I got? Because I need some for myself. So I'll give away five of these bulbs. One, two, three, four, five. No, I'll give away six and then we're equal. Six each because I got 12. So tell me, Kefalonia, like I say, I think it was 1953. So, first off, then before, before that, name and address on the email to this email address, right? But there's a question with this one which you'll have to look up. There was one village in Kefalonia that wasn't hit by the earthquake. Name that village with your name and address to this email. I'll pick out the winners and it doesn't matter if you've won before with the garlic, I'll send you some Greek garlic. Fantastic man, because it's now time, it's, oh, it's nearly time to start thinking about planting garlic and getting it ordered, so you could get some. Until next time, look after yourselves, take good care. Let's pretend.
tell.